Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Needs Podcast, episode 95. My name is Hannah and I am recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. This is a podcast mainly about knitting, sometimes a bit of crochet, spinning, sewing and other fibre and woolly related things. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Instagram and on Ravelry. And both of those places are good platforms to get hold of me through private messages or just to keep um, up to date with what's going on with the podcast. We have a group in Ravelry and that's called Rose Hip Knits Podcast Ravelry Group. And at the moment, or for the whole year, we have a niche long called the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along, which is a niche long where you could knit anything um, but using some yarn that has been dyed but by an Australian or New Zealand indie dyer. So if you haven't heard about that or haven't checked it out before, please go and do so in the Ravelry group because uh, it's definitely definitely worthwhile checking out all the fabulous projects that have been posted in those um, threads for that for, um, for that niche long. <laughs> Today is going to be a bit of a shorter catch-up I think and uh, hopefully that's all that I have time for. We are currently having our school holidays and um, it's been a r rough one this one. Last time I recorded a podcast I had been sick and I was feeling like I was getting sick again and I did get sick so with not much time in between I've had two colds one after the other and with the second cold it was a horrible horrible cough that followed it and it's just been lasting for a very long time then my daughter caught it and she's for the whole school holidays she's had two weeks off now and she's just been sick for the the whole time really just really low on energy so it hasn't been the best best two weeks really but um I guess we've had some nice time together still even though we at least once a day drive each other absolutely crazy um yes it's just because we've been sick and it just hasn't hasn't been as relaxing and enjoyable like I would have wished for but we survived and that's the main thing <laughs> um it's also the weekend before the Australian Sheep and Wool show that's happening in Bendigo and I am going again this year. I didn't go last year but I, I went to two previous years. So that's happening in just a few days so I am um, trying to get ready for that and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, I've also been quite busy in between being sick and having sick children I've been doing quite a bit of dyeing because there's a um, um, handmade market pop-up shop that's happening in Launceston here in northern Tasmania. It's happening this coming week, starts tomorrow and goes until next Saturday, so the weekend of the Australian Sheep and Wool show. And for that pop-up shop there's um, I think t over 20 different um, makers that have part of their range in this pop-up shop and um, so for the first time I'm trying that out so just yesterday I went and delivered a whole heap of my hand dyed yarn and um, to Beck who organizes this pop-up shop and um, yes yeah, so she's going to make it all look beautiful and um, yes you'll the yarn will be on sale for a week um, in Launceston in this Maker's Nest pop-up shop so that's been keeping me a little bit busy um, and we have been doing a few little road trips and things um, when we felt a bit better so yes two weeks um, of yes it feels we're quite exhausted now actually <laughs> and I am so looking forward to going to Bendigo and catch up with people and just have a whole lot of me time and um, yes it will be excellent. <clears throat> so as you can see because let's move on with um, knitting and what I have been making and all those fabulous things. So I am wearing my finished Magnolia jumper. Finally, finally, I think I started this in February or quite early in the year. Uh, Magnolia is a 
sweater pattern by Kimmy Lavard and she's a Danish designer. I won't stand up and show you but um, I'll put some photos in. I have some sort of okay photos. Um, it has a lace panel down the bottom of the body and it's meant to have lace panels um, here as well on the sleeves but because it took me months and months to get through the lace panel on the body I opted out of having them on the <laughs> sleeves. I just need plain sleeves and I got some 30 centimeter circular needles so I could just knit round and yes in the end um, I got it all done and um, I just love the magnolia pattern and, and the fit of it um, as you can see it's quite mild in the color I have um, used a Holst Coast yarn heel double with a silk mower here uh, from um, Collar Girl Collective and I think I have shown these um, skeins every time I've podcasted for the last six months so I won't show them now but it's a charcoal grey um, Holst Coast which is a cotton and wool um, half half approximately and then the, um, the Collar Girl Collective Silk Mohair is the I think 70 mohair and 30 silk, something like that. And that's in the high tea colorway, which has a minty green and a pink to it. So it gives this sort of shifting color. And it's really nice. But, um, and I love it the way it is. And really, I could have done it without the lace down the body because, um, well, the way I have blocked it now is just that I washed it and I put it down flat to dry and the yarn bloomed quite a bit and and you've got um, I think quite a bit denser compared to when I was knitting with it but it's really nice it's just filled out beautifully um, but the lace because I didn't block the lace out you can't really see the lace very much oh it's not that you can't see it but it's just not showing off as beautiful as it it could be um, and having the mild yarn just sort of hides that lace a little bit more but I still I still love it I still it's wonderful to wear it's a wonderful feel um, it's a perfect weight it's it's very light but of course it's still very warm and I think because it has um, sort of 50% cotton in it um, it's not that super hot um, jumper and it's lighter but uh, it's still it's still warm so yes I finished that finally so that's one thing I'll be wearing at the Australian Sheba Wool Show in Bendigo this coming week um I don't think I have anything else to say about this jumper but not only did I finish this one I also finished my Love Note. This is Love Note by Tin Canits. It's a fairly new pattern. I did a test knit of this pattern for Tin Canits and then I decided I wanted to make one for myself because the one I did for the test knit was for my daughter and I really wanted to use some of my own hand dyed yarn and um, I chose to knit it in my new merino fingering which is a 100 percent um, Australian merino that is a traceable and sustainable yarn or the wool in the yarn is and um, also my new um, mohair and silk yarn base so that's a um, 70 mohair and 30 silk and I call it the um, what did I call it the dainty base mohair silk and the no I don't have the the, the yarn again mm, not very well prepared <laughs> and I have to say I sat down and I saw I'm not wearing any earrings today and I thought well that's just that just shows the state of things at the moment I'm is yeah not very organized at the moment everything is just a bit of a should see the house it's just a big big mess after two weeks of school holidays and at all times someone being sick it's just yeah. things are not where they should be but we'll, we'll get we'll get there we'll get back to it 
So it's my love note and the the 100% wool yarn in the new merino is in the colorway pink for days. Yes, pink for days and then the mohair silk is in a new colorway that I call love letter because I've sort of made it for this love note top. <clears throat> it's a crop style but I, I made it the, the longer version in the pattern but it's still quite cropped and it has a lower hem at the back. Again I put some photos in it. I tried to take some nice photos but I was on my own. I'm a bit of a, a one person show so I yeah. yeah. Probably been much nicer photos if I had someone actually taking photos of me and if I put makeup on and I could include my my face but it is what it is. Uh, it's very quick knit. I think the gauge is 17 stitches per 10 centimeters, so um, it creates a beautiful drapey fabric, but it doesn't feel thin or very loose because the mohair sort of fills in the fabric. It's a very nice, easy lace, and uh, yes, that's another thing I'll be wearing when I go to Bendigo this coming week. So you see grey and pink the colours this year, I think. And I'll show the rest of my sort of planned Bendigo wardrobe when I've showed all the things that I have finished and that I'm working on. The third and last thing that I finished since last time are my Heteria socks. I can never pronounce this. Heteria socks by Tracy Lee. I did these for a knit along in the budding designers down under Ravelry group. So I was actually so lucky that um, I finished the socks in time for the, the knit along. And then I was the lucky winner of the price of the knit along. So I'll show that to you now. I received this beautiful skein of Aussie Farmers Market. It's for fits and it's a um, part of the, um, the profit she makes from selling these skeins are donated to the Epilepsy Foundation of Victoria. And this is her Aussie sock which is a 18 merino and 20 nylon and it's beautiful. You can see how beautiful colours. Greens and blues and purples. I love these colours. So thank you Tracy. I love being part of the knit along and I can't believe that I won a prize. So I might make something for this for the Aussie Dyer sock along. Yes, so back to the socks that I made. So yes, uh, Tracy designed these socks and um, I was really happy to make them. They have, and I've, I've talked about these in previous episodes, but they have have an afterthought heel but has a bit of a different construction than the after heel afterthought heel that I normally do so that was very interesting to do you can see that um this is the first sock I made you can see it's quite loose and I think that's um when I'm not really sure what I'm doing <laughs> basically if it's I'm knitting something new and a new construction I think my gauge gets a little bit looser and then you can see in the second sock when I knew what I was doing I was I knew what was coming next and I knew why I was doing what I was doing um, it's it might much tighter and a nicer fit but when they're on um, they're both fine it's a nice textured pattern and the yarn that I used was um, Natural Fiber Arts in a, I think the colorway was Opalicious and it's the her tweed sock, which I think is discontinued or she doesn't um, die on this base anymore. And Natural Fiber Arts is in Queensland. So these are my Queensland entry for the Aussie Dyer knit along, sock along. <laughs> um, I, I really like this yarn, it's, it's very plump. Um, and just knit it up really quickly and they're 100% wool so we'll see how they wear but I think I made them quite big so I think they're very nice to wear on top of other socks when I'm just inside the house and yeah to all my feet so that's those and 
I can't remember when I finished these, but it's it's a while ago now. And I have not cast on a new pair of socks, and it feels really weird. I've been on a mission though to finish jumpers and and other, well, finish jumpers basically. Uh, and now that I've I've finished two, um, and I wanted to continue on my winter suit. I showed you that last time. I'll show you that soon. But yes, I haven't cast on a new pair of socks and just a couple of days ago we were going on a long car trip and I thought I don't have any pro like sock produce that I can just quickly grab and go out the door but I just it would be so quick to just grab a skein of sock yarn and cast something on but I just I think because I'm going to Bendigo and I'm thinking about travel knitting travel knitting for going to the show for the plane ride and the train ride and what to need to when I'm there during the night. I just, it feels like an important decision, like that I make the right decision on what to cast on f for that. Because if I cast on a pair of socks now, I'm very likely to be bringing those with me to Bendigo. So it feels like I need to choose the right yarn, the right pattern, and all that stuff. But we'll see. In the end, I might just do self striping vanilla socks. <laughs> so, yes, two jumpers and a pair of socks. So that's pretty good. And then last time, I one of my finished items was my Wintersuhl by Jennifer Steingas. <clears throat> and I was talking about that I was pretty sure that I would rip it out because it was very funny, baggy shaped in the back. And I let it sit for a little while and then in the end I did rip out the body. And I have started re -knitting it. So the... The yoke and the sleeves were fine, but um, it had some funny short rows, like a second set of short rows in the back here, and I just ripped it back up, and this was 100% complete, but I, I ripped it all back to just under the, where the sleeves, uh, where I divided for the sleeves. So yes, it was all the way back here, and I took out those funny short rows in the back and I took out all the uh, waist shaping and I have just been knitting it straight down and it's it's still it's a lot of fabric in it like before but at least now it's sort of not bunching up into one spot in the back it's more evenly distributed across the whole jumper so it will be a, a loose fit but that's fine it's a let looper let loopy um, jumper so it's it's a rustic wool it's an Icelandic wool it's not next to skin wear it's going to be a jumper that I wear as an like an outlayer instead of a jacket basically so I have only just reached a point where I can start the or I have started the color work only just started the color work that comes in here at the bottom of the body and there's a bit of color work oh it's the same as the sleeves basically Yes, so I'm here now. So I have this bit left on the body. And yes, I was hoping I could finish that today actually. It's Sunday today. I was hoping I could finish that today so that then the jumper has three days to dry before I'm going to Bendigo. I think hopefully three days will be enough with some bathroom floor heating and <laughs> yes, some um, heat pump vents and things to help it dry because this time in Tassie it is not a not optimal not the optimal time um and climate for drying <laughs> things. It's pretty wet and, and cold. Uh, but I'm hoping I can I can do that and that I can um bring it with me to Bendigo or probably wear it because it's going to be very big to pack. I can see that I'm losing light and I don't want to put the light overhead lights on because it creates funny shades. So I'll just try to keep this short. The other thing, the only other thing that I've been working on except for trying to re-knit my Wintersuhl is that I um, signed up for a test crochet for Deanne Ramsey of Adiday Design. She recently designed a very beautiful wrap called Bantam Wrap. Um, and this is what I have done so far. There's three sizes of this wrap and I'm making the smallest one which will um, 
be suitable for 20 gram minis and that's what I wanted to use and there's different ways of doing it but I'm basically doing a main color in a gray and this is my silver colorway and then I'm doing different pink minis for the, um, alternate sections I guess so I'm doing <clears throat> a few different sort of pinky colors so I'm doing that I have completed um, this section here the pink section that's how much you need from the mini and that was how much uh, Deanne needed us to do for the test to see how much yarn we used for that so I haven't got very far I find that I can't it's not something I can just do without checking the pattern knitting the row is fine but when I get get to the end there's the slightly different um, finishing of the row uh, for the different rows so and I haven't got that memorized so I, I just have to keep referring to the pattern so it hasn't been very um, easy to just pick up it and work on and I would love to bring you to Bendigo's travel knitting because I think once I sit there um, it's really easy but I don't know that it would be good if I like if I'm sitting down and talking and being social so I don't know if it will come with me but maybe because at the moment it's the only thing I'm working on except for re-knitting Vintersul and Vintersul will hopefully be done today or tomorrow so there are the things that I have been working on and yes we've been sick we've been on road trips school holidays it's been yes a little bit different to a normal uh, two-week um, period between the recordings I do uh, so I talked about my Bendigo wardrobe and so I have these two that I'm bringing with me and then I think what I will also bring is this one which is my Franken Magnolia so these two are made based on the same pattern Magnolia but this one I I, um, I use a juvenile pattern and I you know obviously did some striping and stuff but it's all this is all my hand dyed yarn not the mohair here but this is my hand dyed yarn so I thought that would be fun that would be fun to wear at the show so you can see pink and grey and then because I love it so much I think I'll wear my star for maybe especially if my winter sewer is not completed in time so I think this is it's grey it's an easy easy colour palette to wear with different things so I might wear that as well so you can see all greys and pinks and purples so that's my Bendigo wardrobe and I think that's probably enough jumpers for the four days. And then I have to go through and see what beanies and things that I want to wear and shawls. I was thinking uh, the other day, oh, I have to make myself a beanie, a new beanie for the show. I have to make a shawl or something. And then I thought, no, 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 wait. You probably have things that you have made that you have not even worn before so this is the best opportunity to get those out and wear them and you know, show the world and people that actually care <laughs> so that's what I plan to do um yeah so that was just a short little catch up I am um, oh I can show you the these are a couple of the mohair skeins that didn't make it to the pop-up shop. I've, um, in the pop-up shop that is in Launceston starting tomorrow, 15th of July, I have included my new mohair silk base and for that week it will only be available there and then after I get back from Bendigo I will li um, list the mohair silk in my Etsy shop um, and possibly a few other skeins that are not sold at the pop-up shop because I did give I did give them quite a bit so there will be lots lots to choose from okay well um if you're going to Bendigo and if you see me there I know it's, it's big big showgrounds and lots of people but if you do see me please um say hi and if I don't recognize you maybe 
say who you are on Ravelry or Instagram and that might then it might click <laughs> but I would I would really love if you came and said hello if you're not going to Bendigo which I'm guessing are most of the people um I hope you will enjoy all the posts Instagram posts and things that people will be um sharing <clears throat> from the show um yes and um that's it for this time I hope it's been okay even though it's quite dark um, take care don't get sick like I have been and it seems like a lot of people are, have these colds and coughs at the moment around here so I hope you're staying well and if you're in the northern hemisphere I hope you're really enjoying summer because if you think it's too hot you can swap with me <laughs> okay everyone Thank you so much for joining me and for um, being part of the podcast. So uh, until I see you next time, take care. Bye.